Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Aaron Plays, and I hope you're doing fantastically well. In this episode, I'll be beginning the first scenario of this game, using opposed vassal play. Um, me and there's Michael, played yesterday, and uh, we had good fun. We played the first four turns of the scenario. So we're about to, I'll go through when we actually get to the map and what's going on. And it's the first time we've played together. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. There was a little bit of time where I was like, the dice! It's always the dice. But yeah, at the end of the day, we had a lot of fun. Um, it's, a, it's a 12 turn scenario. We've done the first four turns. I'd say it's leaning towards him, but you'll see what I mean when we actually get to the actual playthrough. So I'll be stepping through the log, providing the narrative of what's going on as far as I can remember. Um, as always, if you could hit the like, then I know you, you like what you're watching. Um, views is fine. Yeah, if you watch, great. Um, but it's the like that determines, for me, how much you, know, you guys really enjoy it. So if, if you could tickle that like button, great. Any comments, as always, much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already and you like what I do, why not subscribe? But let me take you down through the screen to the actual game. And there's the map. So the scenario is, this is scenario one from this uh, module, which I'm still going to screw up pronouncing. Um, so I'm not going to even bother. Okay. The pronunciation is on the website somewhere on BGG. Anyway, this is scenario one. And the, the whole module is representing the um, campaigns in and around the Battle of Hastings. Decisive days, they call the Norman Conquest of England, 1066 through to 1086. So, yeah, everyone seems to think that the Battle of Hastings was lost by the Saxons, and that was it. No, it, was, it wasn't that easy. Um, so anyway, scenario one. I'm playing the Normans, and Michael is playing the Saxons in this scenario, and the Saxons are already set up. But we'll go through that after I've described what's going on. So it's the scenario is called the Malifos, or Malifos, M-A-L-E-F-O-S-S-E. -S -S -E. No idea, if, again, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but we shall see. So the background of the scenario is October the 14th, 1066, which was the day of the Battle of Hastings. This is around 6.30 p.m. Harold is dead. His army withdraws to the north, and the Normans are in pursuit. A group of retreating Huskals comes across a tr troop from the fire led by Thanes, eager to join a battle they could not reach earlier, so it's late arriving reinforcements. Rallying the men from the fire, they decide to protect the retreat of the army while isolated Norman knights close in on a ditch called the Malifos. So this is the ditch along here. Okay. And the actual map sheet is called the ditch. So it says the Saxons are set up northwest of the last slope. So this here, I hope you can all see my mouse, is the last slope. And they set up northwest of it, up here. Okay. The Normans enter through the side two. So this is why my guys are all lined up here to enter up along side two. The Normans play first, and the game is played in 12 turns. And that there is the turn marker. That will be moved in a moment. So... There are, <clears throat> for the Normans, they have six knights, which are these guys. They have six medium cavalry. I do apologize. Three medium cavalry, which are these guys here, and three light cavalry, which are those there. Some infantry, medium infantry and light infantry. The Saxons have four Huskars. Now, they're, they're sc scattered amongst the guys here. They have four hu Huskars, four foot Thanes, four other Thanes, which I think are actually dismounted Thanes. Some, now, I have no idea how to pronounce this word, C-E-O-R-L-S, Harls, 
holes and some javelin throws. All the holes are lance armed. I mean, I think we, we you know, we would call them spears, but they, they, the system seems to call them lance. So they got one throw of the spear, then they fight with the sword. And the javelins have got four javelins each, even though the counter on the actual counter says three. We, we viewed it, it says, goes three, two, one, last shot to do. And then they get marked with a marker. So those are the forces. The victory conditions, how do you win? So the Saxons must repel the Normans. At the end of the 12 turns, count now, this is where we had a little discussion. It says, count the number of Normans who managed to completely cross the final slope towards side four. So crossing this slope here, to get off here. Okay. 12 or more, striking Norman victory. Saxon resistance is in vain, and the road to London is now open. Between 8 and 11, Norman narrow victory, Saxons are still willing to fight, and the next days might be more difficult than anticipated. Between eight, no, between 4 and 7, narrow Saxon victory, you will pay the price for Harold's death, but many more victories like this one might be needed to finally expel the invaders. And less than 4, striking Saxon victory, this will keep Norman arrogance at bay and saves the honour of the day. While a small group was able to win tonight, a larger army can surely push the usurpers back to the sea. Okay, so the, the question we had about the victory conditions, count the number of Normans who managed to completely cross the final slope towards side four. Now, what if Norman crosses and gets over to this side of the map and then is subsequently killed? Does he still count towards victory? He's crossed the last slope. So could I, as the Normans, get all my, uh, you know, I get 12 men across. All of them are subsequently pounced upon the Saxons and slaughtered. But I've got 12 men across the slope. Nah, that can't be right. So the way we determine it, there must be 12, oh, well, for the total victory. Um, so for get a victory of the Normans, there's got to be at least eight still remaining Normans on the north side of the slope, on that upper side of the slope there. You know, because I can't see how a dead man counts. It, are we wrong? Well, if there's anyone who writes these scenarios or knows the person who wrote these scenarios, if they can clarify, um, they could do that before the next video. Yay! But at the present moment, that's what we're going for. Now... There's in the in the rules, and this is where I think we made me and Michael made a mistake. And um, yeah, it says in, if you're reading the rules, okay. And I described this in my last video. On page thirteen, it says don't read any further. You can already play scenarios one, one and two. Then I sort of mentioned in the previous video. It says well, it's on the next. Two pages, 13, the rest of 13, 14, and a little bit of 15, it brings in rules like cavalry charge. And I was thinking, well, I've got cavalry. So why is it not mentioned? You know, why is it telling me I could play now scenarios one and two? Yet probably my best tactic will be my knights. They can charge. Well, you know, why can't I do that? So we said, well, let, and then a little bit further on, rule 7.3 on page 14 is a Saxon shield wall. With Huskals and Thanes, and it says, I think, well, they, he's got Huskals and Thanes, why can't he play with them? So we decided to use those two pages of rules. And I can tell you now, that was a mistake. What I think they should have put also on the scenario card is do not use the rules beyond um, page 13, because there's no way I could do a cavalry charge on this map. That will attack the Saxons, unless the Saxons do what they did historically at Hastings and come off the bloody hill. Because to actually get to them, the charge distance has got to be six hexes minimum. Anywhere along this front line, six hexes will cost me too many movement points to get there. So that's why I think they didn't include the charge rules.
saying you can play the scenario without them. But that would have been nice if they'd put that on the scenario card because we said, ah, there's cavalry, let's charge. We only worked that part out when it was, I was about up to about here. But right now I'm going to charge, and then I worked it out, uh, I can't. And the Saxon's shield wall is when you've got three of these chaps in a line, Thanes and Tuskulls and such forth. Um, yeah, I think the reason why they might not have included that, they set them up in the shield wall, because that's as far as we read, is because it makes it virtually... Imp uh, I kept on bouncing on that. So that's maybe why that rule was not included in the scenario. It would have been included, should have been said, do not use these rules because it will make the scenario come back. I'm maybe giving a bit of foreshadowing here what's going to happen, but you'll see as we go through. Yeah, there was a tendency for the Normans to go bang and bounce, but we'll go through that. We also had a little discussion about, is this a river hex? Now, the, the graphic on the... Let, let me actually bring it up. Oh, if I can. Right, okay. Because we did, well, we initially counted it as a river and then we realised it probably isn't. So that's a river hex, solid blue. Okay. That's a marsh, that weedy looking thing. There's no bit of blue in that, is there? So, and going through all that, there's nothing on those that terrain there that shows what on earth that is. So at first, well, it's got blue in it. Is it river? River means it's impassable to horses. So we initially started with treating it as a river. And I thought, actually, it's not a river, is it? A river is something solid. And that hex that was shown in that plan shows solid blue. So as it's got the same grayish, lumpish background as the swamp, we just class it as, as a swamp. It's not a river. That is a ditch with some marshy, boggy ground at the bottom of it. So, again, if we did that wrong, please let us know. Um, we had a little, few other little discussions about the rules and throughout the game. Um, we, went, we did quite a few deep dives on the rules. and If I can remember what they were when we get to them, then I'll go through it. There was a lot of clickage, so you'll be... Uh, me moving and, and, and carry getting in the wrong way rounds and such forth, but you can live that with. Um, and there's also an instance when characters die. Yes, some characters die. They tend to get in the way. In other words, all the counters on the actual vassal module, it's sometimes difficult to actually put the dead guy, dead dude, back on the map in the same space because a live dude wants to be in the same space. And the vassal module goes, don't like that. So there's a couple of that. So... Without any furthers, um, I'm going to start the actual log and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so we're beginning turn one. I'm going to go through the sequence of, of play, the full sequence, even though um, quite a lot of it doesn't occur at any specific time. There's not, there's no archers on this field. Um, I'd say there are a few javelinmen, and the javelinmen have got a bit of range on them. Um, I didn't fully appreciate at the beginning um, the also the guys that are armed with the foot lance. They're one-shot wonders. So, the sequence is, he says, tripping over the card. All right, so, it's not on turn one. Offensive fire. I've got no one on the board, so I can't fire. Announcement of cavalry charges. I'm too far away to in my head at this point, even though I've already revealed I'm going to never be able to carry charge, I'm thinking I can't carry charge. If it means a totally flat map, you can actually charge onto the battlefield. But it ain't totally flat. There's a bloody big ditch in the way. Movement and defensive fire. Okay, so none of his units can defensive fire. It seems like archers can. Um, I think slingers can defensive fire. Maybe even crossbow more can defensive fire. Uh, do, 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 looking at the picture, offensive or defensive, but Javelinman can only offensive fire. That means he can use his missiles in his own turn. And I thought, okay, let's see what happens. All right. So on this screen, this is the big clicky button. This will click me through. And as it says, turn one, and I move the turn marker over to this side here. Um, 
because I might be bringing stuff on this side and there. If I get over there, game's going to be over. Yay! Right. And I bring the guy on. And as you can see, I'm clicking it right. Okay. So moving on. So each hex of there is one movement point. So it's one, two. So, well, that's another thing. Half hexes. Are oh, half hexes in bloody play? It doesn't say anywhere in the rules if they are or they are not. So we were sort of saying, okay, and, and I know I'm pausing the actual move here. Is it pressing the wrong button? I hate pressing the wrong button. Is that in play? Okay. And then vice versa in there. So I've paid the half movement point, yeah, a movement point to come on there. So that's one, two, three. So I think they they should be in play along these edges, but maybe not so much on these edges. And we sort of changed it to part way through because here, coming along here, seems a bit of a sneaky way. If I can get around this side, and I was thinking about it, I can get around here without having to worry about this here. But is that a bit gamey? Don't know. It would be nice to have an absolute definition because there was a moment when, which will come up, and I'll remind you all when it does come up, that I needed to retreat. And I retreated onto one of these hex sides here um, with the back of a, of a horse. True, right, wrong, no. I, I think we sort of mean, and I think me and Michael might house rule it, that you can't use these hexes to move, but you can use them to retreat. So you're not you're not game, going to gamingly gain an advantage, but you can use. I mean, the world does not end here, does it? Okay, but you know the Saxon line. There could be a continuation on a real of, of more. This is only a, a snapshot of a battle. There could be more going on over there. But we're trying to treat it so that no one's taking an advantage of the edge of the edge of the board. Again, if any of you guys are watching and have got a definite definition of no, you can't use the side of the board or, or map edges, or you can, let us know. Because I've gone through the rules a couple of times, can't find out. Most games tell you half hexes count or half hexes don't count. This one is silent. There you go. Again, if there's more maps like up here, then those hexes would have counted. So we sort of did a fudge mudge of it. Where this is our learning game. This is his first ever game of the system. And to be fair, I think he played bloody well considering it's his first game of the system. And I've played Cry Havoc way in the past. Recently done a bit of Giscard. Um on my I said recently, I, I was surprised it was actually over two years ago. Um I haven't touched the, the, the system really since me and Mark, you know, met Mark, we dabbled with the scenario, uh, but that was about it. So yeah, getting back into it, there this the rules are a bit vague in places and then very specific in others. That's what I like to say at this moment. More will be revealed. Okay, so carrying on moving. So I've paid three at this point. Okay, so treating that half X as playable. Three, four, five. Now that is me changing facing and I don't believe there is any cost at that. Um, so I'm still counting that as five, six. Now, going on down a slope or up a slope is four for a horse. So that takes me to 10. Yes, I can do a little size. Move. Any movement. Now, let's bring up the really pointy thing. See, on a, on a horse. Let me zoom a little bit in on, 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 on his endeavors. Okay. So he's got that little pointy arrow, and I did explain this in the previous video. That's his front. So any movement into those three hexes is he's not turning or or doing anything. Um, so he can move. So effectively, it's like a side side step, whichever way you want to look at it. So I think that's as far as he gets. It is. Bring on the next guy, getting his facing right. Okay, so that is two, three, four, five, six. 10, 11. Okay. And this, you're going to see a lot of these. What is that? I think we were discussing at the proper moment of time. So we're working it out. So that's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, again, 10, 11. All right, bringing on some more guys on the southern. I notice I didn't pre plot where they're coming on. I just moved them on. Again, it doesn't say if you need to. So we just decided to, to, to move them in one at a time as, they, as they're coming in. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, I thought this was two to go through for a horse. This scrub. It is also four. Horses go slow on any sort of not nice ground. I'm not going to count the, all the movement points out because that would be a bit boring. I'm going to talk and right. So as you can see, I'm bringing quite a few of my cavalry down the um, southern ed map edge. Um, what I also hadn't tweaked at this point is that light cavalry actually can move 15. I'm moving them 12. Learning game, allowed to make mistakes, can't read numbers. Difficult to read numbers at times. So now I'm bringing the infantry on. Um, the more heavier infantry. Now remember, if he's got a circle around it, it's defense value. So the three values, attack, defense, and movement. So the black is attack, red is defense. Blue is movement. Watch the previous video. I'll go into a little bit more detail. Now, if it's circled, the defense value, that means they're armored. If it's not, they're not armored. So my light cavalry down here aren't armored. It's not circled. These are light infantry. That's not circled either. So, okay. And again, we're now talking about slopes and the ditches. Um, I think at this point, now I didn't... Uh, in the actual text here, I didn't say the phases. I, I Once I got to about turn two, I thought, right, I might need to label the phase because you guys need to know what we're up to. I think we're working out who can see what here because he's on an upper slope and down a slope. If I'm right, if he's, I'm closer to this here, this edge. So therefore, I'm hidden this part's hidden but he can see the butt of the horse because or can he because he's this guy is one two three to that edge whereas the butt of my horse is one two three i think you can see the butt of the horse but you can't see the head of the horse see? but you can target either hex when you're firing i remember this is where i went, oh that's what that zero one is they've got the foot lance so they can fire that. I was like, ah, I was thinking I was going to suffer missile fire from javelins. Suddenly I realized, yeah, he's got a lot of guys who can throw sticks. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. Okay. So we're working out, and you can see he's done the range meter has now appeared. We're checking line of sights. And different guys but i said there was a lot of discussion going on here about line of sight and who can see what where I, I, and the way I, i'm sort of trying to visualize it and i said most games on a tactical nature you've got to grok the line of sight rules eventually because each is different but once you do grok it oh, oh what's the word grok mean uh, some of you younger guys not, not know, know what that means once you understand it now, Grok has a lot more meaning. Read Stranger in a Strange Land. Then you'll understand the word Grok. So, shooting of these lances is becoming to be... Oh. Oh, dear. Anyway, let's carry on and go through the log. And again, we're talking... There's a lot of conversation going here before we, we actually get to roll dice. We're talking about the back of the horse. Because when, when it's more than two hex, you've got to make an impact roll. So when he actually does make a roll, in range four, again, we're talking about who can see what here. Eventually, he'll make a roll. I did say there's going to be a lot of clickage. 
I've got to maintain them. All right, there we go. Six. So what is an impact roll? I hear you ask. I wonder if I can show it on here. Uh, not on that one. It must be on this one. All right, that's it. Okay. So when you fire beyond two hex range, it might not hit the actual target. So one to four, you do. And then depending on the angle of the shot, depends where it like. So you could be targeting one guy and even possibly hit a guy you can't even see. And these are the modifiers. So if it's long range, it's plus two. It's a wounded shooter and medium range is plus one and minus two if it's a short bow, slinger, crossbow within four hexes. None of these modifiers are, are applying on his shot. Um, if we look again, where well, they've done these charts here for you guys. Okay, so foot javelin has got, it's actually a foot lance he's using here, has got a one to four range as short, five to eight medium, and nine to 12 long. Now, to be able to fire over, right? There's none of this actually occurring here. So I was going to say, oh, you could, his javelin, which he's got lined up um, here, can actually shoot over these guys if they're targeting someone that's at medium or long range. But these are firing at one, two, three, four hex range. So that's short range. So there's no modifiers to his roll. So an impact roll of six means he hasn't hit the hex he was targeting. Um, he actually hit, because he was targeting this guy but he was coming in along this line uh, basically six hits this guy which is actually out of his line of sight okay so that's the impact roll you can see we're talking it through and then you have the effect roll now low is good in this so that was like oh that's not too nice now i'm not going to do this for every shot but let me just show you how this actually works okay so it was missile against a mounted target all right, he's using a lance. I wish I could be a little bit more precise. There we go. Hold on. Oh, am I going to sneeze? No. Yes. No. No. All right. Okay. Um, so you roll a two. My guy's armored. That makes it to a three. Okay. Then we go along here. And he's in light. Well, I think we actually determined he's in B, uh, medium cover. Um, because of the way the slopes were. Um, a slope is medium if fire crosses the top lip, which we deemed it did. So it's a B result. So if we scroll down a bit further, what does it be? Horse unharmed, rider stunned and dismounted. That sounds about right. So just quickly go through that again. So the weapon, the result to, because add plus one to the die roll if the target is armoured, so that became a three. You then go across the type okay medium cover is a b now might have preferred it to be light cover because then i would have got a c which would have been a horse on harm where well, this is an offensive fire rider wounded but in this case i got this uh, yeah i got yeah horse on arm rider stunned and dismounted okay so this then brought up as you'll see in a moment I moved the map, not the actual. Oops, sorry. Right. Bring that back up. There we go. Right. So he's hit this guy. Sorry, targeted this guy, hit this guy, stunned him and dismounted from the horse. Where does he go when he's dis when it, when, it, when he's dismounted? Because he can't be in the same hex as his horse. All right, we're still talking about so I placed him there. I try you can't place him in the in the, the same hex because it's a, two things can't be in the same hex. Could I have placed him normally when you dismount from a horse, you go to either side, there or there. But there's someone occupying those. Could I have displaced this this guy or this guy? Because this puts him in a really vulnerable and position. Um and from a visual and a what's the word? I, I I sometimes load to use this term in a game, but a realistic point of view, the arrows impacted him. Oh, sorry, Lance is a spear in my mind, and he's fallen forward. Surely he'd have gone back. 
but then there's these guys, and he can't be in the same hex as these guys. Would these guys have been displaced um, backwards? Don't know. Anyone who can answer that question, that is not. Because, again, the rules don't say. There's nothing in the rules that says if dismounted from a horse by enemy fire, you must go here, there, or anywhere. It just says dismount. So, yeah, very vague. So I put him there, and then that's, he's marked that guy there with that little counter. That means he's basically got no more missiles. So he said, then said, could he target that guy, same guy? Um, I deemed not because he's on the brown there and he's closer to the lip there. And anyway, it was a little bit vague at that moment, but we deemed probably not. So he's firing at that guy there. He got gets an impact roll. Again, you can see there's a lot of discussion. These these all these circles going around are us having a, a chat about line of sight because remember this is our first game of the get of the system so we're going through and do we then finally determine i think we finally determined that he could hit this guy because he's above the lip he's not going through the actual hex itself that's by the way me now clicking this as we're talking this is okay He fired, he rolled a one, um, and then the effect was a six. So the one was direct hit, then the effect of a six, which, okay, so he's now a foot figure. So it's Lance against a foot. I'll tell you what, let me bring it up for the first few shots. Okay, so it's now using this part. Lance, he rolled a six, he's still armoured. That becomes a seven, and I've got medium cover, no effect. So it's like, phew, you didn't die. And I've done it again. Oh, man. He removed, I want to move this down, and I move the map down. Hmm. Right, there we go. Back on. Okay, then he had a few more shots, long range shots this time. Remember, the, well, I say long range, not, they actually weren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 12 hexes for a javelin man is foot javelin. Yeah, that's still medium range, which he's allowed to do. He can shoot over his head of his guys. Um, working out the shot. Lots of line of sights checking. Get the die roll in a minute. There we go, one. So... It's the target. Then rolls a 10, no effect on the target. I'm sort of like thinking, I mean, I wasn't expecting this kind of missile fire. Um, I was thinking when I was looking at the scenario, ah, no bowmen. Javelins can still, they can still hurt. Yeah. Sharp, pointy things, fire thro thrown at you with, with menace. It hurts. And that's what we've got here. There's a lot of, me going, ah. Oh. He's trying to get the line of sight tool to work. It's it does take a little bit of especially it depends on the all map. If you zoom out, it's, it's a bit easier. Um and again. All right. Let me just scroll down. Medium range shots with his with his again, he's shooting his accurate. But the effect, phew, I am breathing sighs of relief at this moment. I'm thinking, right, he's, he's hitting the guys. And this is also, I'm thinking, maybe I should have a gap between each guy because of this impact roll, you, you know, if it makes it harder to hit. Because a mass target, I suppose it, it's it's quite correct. It's fairly easy to, you, if you miss the actual guy you're aiming at, you're going to hit the other dude next to him. And I was like, ah! again, learning game. We're doing lots of sight things. He's, I think he's working out what to do with his infantry. Um, and this is where the first time, if you look in the actual written display, I thought, yeah, you need to know what phase we're at. So it's set, this is turn one. 
Saxon movement phase. Okay. And he's working out. All right, so he's pulling back the dudes that are now missileless, and he's now moving his shield wall. Now, I was thinking, woo, that would be useful. They've come down off the hill. They're still behind the hill. And then he's attacking the actual stun dude. I thought that was nasty. Nasty, man. And his first attack missed. Then I realized, oh, he's attacking him one at a time. Now, when it comes to attacking, you can attack a, a, a guy multiple times. It's not like a lot of these games. One guy can be attacked once and that's it. Okay. So um, this guy attacked that guy. And now this guy's going to attack that guy. And I thought, well, what does it mean? He could have combined the two together. Um, but what you can't have is one guy attacking two or more guys. You can't do that, but you can do it the other way around. So, and he rolled a five, which is enough to kill him. And I thought, hmm, first casualty. And now we are starting turn two. You see the turn two marker has gone. Norman turn. Okay, so this is where I'm working out. Ah, can I get now this shield wall? What does it what's the effect of the shield wall? Sorry, I'm just gonna have to have a slurp of D. What is the effect of the shield wall? Well, as I said at the intro of this and our um when we were looking at the map, I don't think we should have been playing with the shield wall. Okay. Um but we are. Um it gives him makes him treat this hard cut. He's got he's got to be a minimum of three dudes to make the shield wall. He's got that. They've got to be Huskals and Thanes. He's got that. So that is a shield wall. They're also, if you notice, they are facing the vertices of the hexes like this, rather than just having the guy flat on. Okay. Because for infantry there is no facing. Um, for the cavalry there is, that's what the little dot is. But for these guys, the order shield wall, there is facing. So effectively, anything along that those spines there is treated as the shield wall. And the effect is shooting at it classes hard cover. Mm, not going to really do much. And if you're fighting against it, it gives you, um, gives you an advantage on the terrain. Now, or a terrain advantage, it classes a terrain advantage. What we now start to do is a mistake, or we believe is a mistake. We're starting to say, well, he's, he's uphill. So if I've got a, a guy here or here attacking that, is that two column shifts to the left? Because he's got negative, to, you know, to being on that terrain and attacking a shield wall. This is where I'm starting to think, I'm going to get through these guys. So... Um, we sort of corrected that later on in saying that if these were in the open, not being charged, they count as a negative terrain. But you don't get two lots of negative terrain. But he did on the initial combats that are about to occur. So but we'll go through that in a bit more detail. Now, this is when we had this more discussion um, again. Is this a river? Is it a marsh? Can I get round? Because for horses, um, it costs four movement points for each other. Four, eight. And then to get there, that's 12. That's pretty much the horse's entire movement. I ain't going any f very far. So I'm working out what I'm going to do. I'm, uh, how am I going to get round this shield wall? Also, there's a burning vengeance for the guy who just died. So I said there's no fire because my guys, I, I don't have any fire. Uh, though that now twig that, okay, actually these guys do. But they'll way out of range and i've also got the, this is what the little number ones are on the side i'm like oh that's what it means you learn okay so we're into normal so there's no fire so we're into normal i can't charge so working out how i'm going to get there all right and i couldn't and this is where we struggle to put a mounted dude on top of the dead guy just wouldn't so we move him out of the way, place that, and he won't lie properly in the hex. I I honestly don't understand, but there we go. Bringing up some infantry. 
Okay, carry on moving. Trying to work out a path through this awful terrain. This is, I still haven't worked out that my light carrier got 15 movement points. Um, bring up some infantry. So this is definitely not the right terrain for a cavalry charge by now. I'm starting to twig that, hold on, I, I, I can't do a charge. Because I've got to be six hexes away. The last four hexes have got to be in a straight line. And I'm like, ah. So I've given him the advantage of the shield wall. <laughs> not giving myself an other. Oh, dear. It doesn't matter. I say, it's a learning game. We're playing relatively fast. And we're having fun. We're talking about it. And that's the main thing. We're talking about the game. We're talking, you know, there, there are rules issues. Um, but overall, when you're looking at it, I mean, that is a formidable line of Saxons on top of that hill. But we're rucking it now in in this area. You know, there's combat going on. So as I said, it's now the normal combat phase of turn two. So I'm working out who, who's attacking what. So those two Norman knights are going to be attacking this guy. So I'm attacking the shield wall, wall here. So... I'm using the 21 to 30 column. So let's see how we get there. All right. I'm bringing this back up. I'm hopefully going to remember this is the one that's got to come down as well. So we're now looking at this combat table here. So it's combat against infantry. Okay. Clicking that. Yeah, that gets that down. So if I can bring that up there. So that's, I'm going to click that knight there. His combat value is 27. His combat value is 26. So 27 plus 26 is 53. You then subtract his defense value, which is 9. 53 take away 9 is 44. All right, yes, 44. Okay, so going back on this now. So we're starting on this column here, 31 to 50. Okay, that, that, uh, that does it. 31 to 50 column. But he's on that. This is where we count the terrain twice. He's a shield wall, down one column to the left. He's also up slope, down one column to the left. And then I'm getting my, because I've got two dudes against one, or one column shift to the right, 21 to 30. I think I should have been actually attacking at 31 to 50. But there we go. Learning game. Make sure I bring this down. So 31 to 50. Or 21 to 30. Let's see what I actually rolled. I can't remember. I rolled an 8. And this is where I start thinking. Hmm. Okay. So 21 to 30 column with an 8. He is armoured, so it becomes a 9. Is a C. If we'd been using the upper column, it'd also been a C. So it made no difference. Okay. The effect, effect of C, all defenders retreat one hex. So I'm like, two of my best dudes push this guy back one hex i was like that was exciting one dead dude i've pushed him back okay so i'm working out who's going to advance into that hex i can move up to half my movement allowance but if i have got to go through that hex yeah that, and if i move into that hex and then out of that hex, he can get a infiltration attack on him. So I thought, mm, I don't really want to risk that. So I decided not to. If I was attacking this guy with someone else, which is that infantry, then I could have done, done that infiltration attack because I uh, wouldn't have to suffer an infiltration attack. But I decided no, because that infantry guy attacking 11 to 7. He's not got a great differential. And then I was thinking he's going to be down two, still doing it incorrectly. So that would be down, uh, uh, more likely I'm going to kill my own dude. So I thought, no, combat is not obligatory. So, and I, I thought that was it. So 
I'm not going to attack anymore. So it's now the Saxon to an offensive fire. So again, I've got to weather the storm because I'm now realizing this is a lot trickier than it actually looked. I was thinking, ah, get up there, bang, bang, bang. Uh -uh. Two of my best cavalry dudes force one um, thane back one hex. I was like, oh dear. So let's see what he gets up to. Yeah, shooting. Um, he rolled a six, so he missed, and it landed in that hex there, which was, whew. As I actually typed up there, whew, miss. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm supping tea, keeping the... Um, the old throat larynx working there. More shots coming in. We're trying to work out the slopes and such forth. Who can see what? Tricky map. See, now this is what gets... This is meant to be the first scenario. Okay? It is the first scenario. It's a learning scenario. Why the... Oh, oh nearly said the F word there. Why would you put one of the most difficult maps on your first scenario? It is, you know, I would have thought a bit more level for it, maybe a little slope here and there. But the amount of slopes, it is tricky. Um, but there we go. Maybe you're thinking this is the latest module you've played, all the other modules in the past. You, you know, this is, but this is a learning game. It even says, you know, you need to read this far in the rules, etc., etc. This is tricky terrain. I'm not sure. I mean, okay, once we start to get into castles, I've never played in a castle. All these castle maps, never played in a castle. Um, is it going to need to ease down? So another six, he missed again. It's like, I think I, yeah, phew, I miss. Well, considering the accuracy he had on the first turn, I'm starting to get a bit, oh, they can miss. He likes aiming at the butt of my horses. Okay. These are all line of sight questions we're talking through. And this is what took a bit, quite a bit of time to play. Um, and again, we'll, we'll get better at it as we go along. All right, that one looks like it's a hit. Um, okay, what actually happened there? A wound. All right, yes. He hit the target and got a good result. That. All right, so let me just backtrack that a bit. All right. Yeah, there you go. So he's a Norman uh, medium cavalry unit. Attack strength of 19, 10. Sorry, 19 attack, 10 defense. Um, now he's been shot. He flipped through the county. He's now dropped from a 2 a 10, 6. Okay. <sighs> I'm using up his ammo, though. I am using up his ammo. Okay. He targets him again. No, he's now targeting down this side. And... I'm going to skip quite quickly through this. Again, we're working out lines of sight with these ridges and such forth. Okay. And a lot of this guy, yeah, it forces me back four hexes. Um, again, we ask a question, does that mean he turns around? I said his hex is not movement. So I'm seeing that it's not the horse walking backwards. They're just pulling back, turning around, coming back forward again, trying to get away from that missile fire. Um, I thought it was quite thematic. I could, you know, I could quite easily see what's going on here. Um, lots of shots coming in, and my horse and they're just saying, "You know what? We don't want any of this." Um, it doesn't say. It says it says four hexes retreat on the actual combat result. So more shots coming in. Um, again, we're still working out the lines of sight here. Um, and then yeah, he forced that one back as well. You can see, like, oh dear. Javelin's throwing. He's now working out. So I've got it. The it's now the Saxon movement phase. Okay. We're talking about trees. I don't know why we're talking about trees, but we were. Um, hey, we just talk about trees. Why not? We're talking about everything else. Um, and I think he's working out where it's best to build his line up again. Remembering, I've got to get past this slope here. 
So he's pulling back the shield wall. Okay, moving a few infantry around. And Norman turn three. You know what? Okay, so I did say at the start of the video, I was only going to do, um, I was going to do the four turns, but I have been jibber jabbering for a while here. So I'm actually going to pause it at this point. Okay. Um, we're just about to go into Norman turn three. I'm going to make another video of the, the, the subsequent two turns because I don't like to make the videos too long. Um, so I'm now going to go back to me and, uh, yeah, so let me just stop this at the present moment. Okay. Yeah, as I said, I, at the beginning, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll do the full game. But actually going through that, it, it did, and narrating it, it, it took a bit longer, well, quite a bit longer than I anticipated. In fact, twice as long, because I was going to do the full four turns. I've done two. I'll do the next video will be the other two turns. Um, me and Michael are going to continue this in a few days' time. Um and we might conclude it because we're starting to speed up a little bit. There's less and less line of sight questions coming. But yeah, as I said, part way through there, why would you put the initial learning scenario on probably one of the most difficult maps I've seen in the system? You know, those slopes are like, whoa, who can see what? Now, horses gives the opponent advantage. You can see either the head or the butt. And a lot of it shot screening against the butt. Um, sometimes then the impact is on the head and I've realised that maybe I've, I've congested a little bit too much with, with my guys because, I mean, he misses one but then he hits the other because he's right next to it. So maybe a bit of spacing. You know, each of those hexes is meant to be two metres. I suppose if it's a full-on cavalry charge, they would be you know, knee to knee. But I'm not doing a cavalry charge because I can't because the terrain is awful. Maybe I need to be a bit more spaced out. I also hadn't anticipated that all of those guys which had the little zero one can throw spears. Um, one shot wonders. Yeah. But it's still like, Ooh, it's, it's I thought you had three javelmen. That was it. But it's a learning game. We're learning the system to play it and, and move on further in the scenarios. Hopefully we got on well, we had a good, let's say chin wags. And there was no animosity. There was a little bit of a discussion about half X's again, which will be in the next scenario uh, episode. Um, but, Overall, the rules, they don't cover everything. I suppose if they covered everything, they'd be about three times thicker. But there, there, there will be time, you know, especially the line of sight, it's a little bit tricky. That guy that was stunned, where should he have gone? I mean, by throwing him forward, which didn't feel thematic, you know, he's been hit by a spear, you know, it's natural to go back. My guy's gone forward. Really? I mean, the way you could look at it, maybe the, the horse reared the actual because my guy's stunned. So the horse reared, the spear hit the horse, um, didn't do it, you know, it landed on the flat side, didn't actually hurt the horse. But the horse reared up, my guy then falls forward, possibly. Um, but it would be nice to have a, a, a actual rule on that because that meant then he's got, he thought, well, I, I can now rush forward and damn, 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 stab it in the head and finish. And like, I'm thinking, I've lost a guy um, because I didn't know where to actually put a stun dude. So, yeah, that that did jar a bit. Um, there were a few, as I say, line, the line of sight issues and such forth. And as I say, we're coming up to the half hexes question will be in the next episode because it was like, again, can you not just like say in your rule book, which is now not the first edition. Second, these questions I know have been asked, asked on Board Game Geek. And there's never really a satisfactory answer. So just put it in the book and it's then done. The infiltration rules, I mean, I'm trying to not do the infiltration because I don't, I haven't got enough guys. I remember I need to get guys across the top of the hill. I don't want to start taking losses by trying to wheedle my way through. I want to smash my way through. I think my knight should smash the way through. Yeah, I'll push one guy back, one hex. Mm -hmm. However, the claim was played in good spirit. It was a lot of fun. Um, so there's two more episodes, two more episodes, two more turns to do, which I'll do in the next episode. Um, so thank you for watching. 
I hope it was fun for you guys. Again, let me know in the likes. Um, with the likes, kept in tickling, whatever you've got to do, hit the like, whatever. It's using one of these things, isn't it? Click it. Um, comments much appreciated, especially the little things. If you are an expert on this system, please, please help. Um, because yeah, and you'll see there's a, a really important thing coming up in the next episode about question wise, and it's regarding an ORS. So, um, but until next time. Play games, have fun, and bye, Internet. <laughs>